Hi, today I want to talk to you about how to varnish a painting and it gets a little bit into how to do an isolation coat because they're very similar. This is on an acrylic painting. Hello everyone, my name is Mike Svob and welcome to my channel. I've been an artist and a teacher for over 30 years and I've decided to start this channel to help you become a better artist. Now if you stay with us, I will answer your questions on a weekly basis about how to become that better artist. All right, now I've got several paintings here in front of me which are in various stages of completion. One is completely varnished, the others are all part way to being varnished. And I'm gonna give you a few examples of what goes on, what to watch for, you know, how you might approach this. As an artist, the most important thing to me is the look of the painting and varnish impinges on the look of a painting. Um, what I mean by that is when you look at paintings, you'll see when the, painting, when the paint starts to dry in oil, acrylic, watercolor, whatever medium, you'll get areas where it's flat, areas where it's glossy. The glossy areas look different, the color looks deeper, richer, and the flat areas look flat. Basically everybody understands what flat looks like. Now, when, I, when you do acrylic and you use different mixtures of water and different things that happen, what happens is the painting dries unevenly, and you can see in this painting here that some areas are glossy, some areas are flat. This one I've just painted on, I haven't dealt with in any way. So on this one, I'm gonna do what you can call varnish, if, you, if it's as far as you wanna go, or what I would refer to as an isolation layer, and I'll talk a little bit more of that when I do it, but this one here is quite uneven. Now I've got another one here, right here, which I've got, an isolation coat on, and you can see it's not as uneven, all right? And then I've got one over here, which I'm gonna bring over, and this one here is finished, it's varnished, and it's flat, it has a flat finish. You can see this one has no gloss in it, all right? So that's just one type of varnish you might use, all right? That one's completed. This one here, back to the thing about varnish and the look of varnish, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about why else you might varnish a painting. Now the look of the painting is the most important thing as an artist, but there are a couple other things that matter. One is the permanence of the painting. So some of the paint manufacturers will sell you products that they say will make your paintings last longer. In oil paint, it's really important. In, in acrylic, they sell UVLS and a couple other things that you can put on your painting, which will make it last longer. The idea of UVLS is that the light doesn't make the painting fade as quickly or the substructure of the painting, which would be the canvas or board or whatever's underneath the painting. So the paint film will last longer and the pigments will not fade as fast, all right? Now, I don't really believe in that. I don't think it does that much, but it does work to some degree. So you can consider that. With me, the permanence of the painting means I want it to last a fair length of time. My basic thing is I want it to last as long as I do and hopefully after that. Now, what I mean by that is I don't want the paint to break down, I don't want the surface to break down. If there's a problem, now one of the problems I've had is people scratching paintings, it's very common, or people spilling things on paintings, getting them dirty, they fall down, all kinds of things happen. Um, if you have several layers of acrylic on top of the painting and then a final one that you call the varnish coat, if somebody scratches the painting, punctures the painting, hurts the painting in some way, spill, you know, whatever happens, it's only on the varnish and it's easy to fix. If you do not have a varnish layer and all you have is the straight acrylic, if somebody damages your painting or somebody scratches it or whatever may happen to you as the artist or later on somebody who owns it, what will happen is they will have to repaint the painting. Now that's a bigger issue than just re-varnishing a painting. So it protects the painting from scratches and nicks and things like that. If you know your painting is gonna be somewhere where people can touch it or get at it, little kids in particular, they scratch paintings. I've had it happen a million times. I've done great big ones where people can get close to the painting and I can wash it and re-varnish it. So it's good. I don't have to deal with all the little things. Now, the final thing about varnishing a painting is the protection of the painting in another sense. And it's, it's more about oil paint, right? And it's more about the museum business, right? Or the, you know, the way they look at it. Some artists will use Damar on acrylic and 
This is an example of Damar here. This is a spray Damar varnish. Damar varnish is not really what you need to use on acrylic, but a lot of people will. So I'm gonna suggest we move this one aside and you don't use that. That's really meant for oil painting, all right? Now I have another thing here, which is a polymer varnish from Golden. And that one is flat or matte. I mix it up myself. I mix a little bit of gloss, a little bit of matte, and I spray that with a air gun, basically. And that one I do in my studio. I have my little puppet show tent that, you know, I wear a mask, all those good things. I suggest you don't spray. I suggest you brush it on. Now, why? It's just safer. It's healthier. But it's not as effective. So if I have a lot of paintings to do, I will use my puppet show and spray with a sprayer, okay? But for this, I'm gonna do it here. Now the first one I'm gonna do here is an isolation coat or varnish. It's the same thing in many respects. Now, an isolation coat is something that protects the painting, evens it out, makes sure you got enough glue in the painting. This is the same as glue. This is acrylic polymer. This one has matte and gloss in it, all right? Now, this is really easy to do. You lay your painting down flat, make sure it's relatively clean. You don't wanna you know, glue the bugs into it. I, you know, if you get bugs there or hair or whatever's hanging around. So you might wanna wipe it off or wash it off, let it dry, and then come and use the medium. So I just take the medium like this. I put some on. I take a brush which is wet, in this case the brush is in the water. Take a brush, take most of the water out, and I try to spread this evenly over the surface. Now, with acrylic, if you work acrylic too much, you get bubbles in it. So you don't wanna work it too much, you don't wanna use a sponge, you don't wanna use a roller, you just wanna use a brush and try to brush it out evenly, relatively evenly. So I make sure I get the whole thing covered. If you miss a spot, well, you're gonna see it later. And one of the things about acrylic is you have to be careful of the temperature and the humidity. If it's very, very low, the humidity, you have very little time to do it. If the humidity is really high, it takes forever to dry. So you wanna be a little bit careful of that. In the summer, around here in these parts, if the humidity is really high and the temperature is high, I don't varnish my paintings because I get all kinds of problems. If the temperature is really low, same thing, I have all kinds of problems. If your painting dries with a milky finish, that's usually because it's too cold and it's usually because you use too much medium or too much varnish, whatever you wanna call it, and it won't dry out completely. Now, if you look at that, you can see, you know, it's relatively even. Now, if I stand it up like that and let it dry, it will tend to get drips or runs in it. So I leave it flat to dry. So I'm gonna move that one aside over here. And one of the things about this is if I wanted this to be the final varnish coat, it would work the same way. So it's not really any different when I put a varnish on. So I'm gonna move that aside over here. And I'm gonna to go to this one and I'm gonna put a final picture varnish on it. So just watch the difference, it's a miracle. This is polymer medium gloss. So this is acrylic gloss medium. This was a mixture of acrylic matte medium, gloss medium, and water, all right? Now this one here is thicker, and this, is, this has nothing in it other than pure gloss acrylic. So I take a little bit, don't need as much. It's much thicker. You can see the way it comes out. And I've got a wet brush, and I will spread this around evenly. You can pre-mix this if you want. You can put it in a container and mix it with water. You know, you don't want to add too much water, so maybe, you know, half water, half medium at the most. But whatever amount of water you put in acrylic will evaporate out. So if you want to have a decently thick layer on, you don't want to add too much water because it'll dry down to be so thin as to be ineffective. So again, I've got a certain amount of time, depending upon the conditions. We're in a studio here. It's fairly cool, probably high humidity because of where we live. 
And if I do this while it's drying on a thicker medium like this, I will get brush marks. If I don't want brush marks, I want it to have enough time to dry so it dries flat. Same thing, if I tip it up, it's gonna get drips. I just lay it flat and I let it dry on its own. You can see now the whitening agent in it. There's just a little bit. So when this one's dry, it'll dry to a gloss as opposed to this one, which is completely flat. All right, and that's all there is to varnishing a painting with a paintbrush, with using the brush method. Not the spray method. We might do the spray method in another episode, but I'll have to get the puppet show out. And until then, you'll have to wait and see what the puppets do. I hope you found this information useful. Now, I have a handout called How to Fix Your Painting, and you can get it by clicking on the link below. Thank you for watching.